Note the medial aspect of hip, which is cut at the level of fourth lumbar vertebrae. See the outline of the pelvic cavity, which lodges the parts of digestive, urinary, and genital organs. This is the terminal part of abdominal iota, which runs under the bodies of lumbar vertebrae and terminates by dividing into two internal iliac arteries at the level of fifth lumbar vertebra. This tubular structure, situated on the right side of the iota, is the posterior vena cava. It is a large venous trunk, draining the venous blood from the hind limbs, pelvic organs, abdominal wall, kidney and liver. It is formed by the union of two common iliac veins. Note the internal iliac artery, which is the terminal branch of abdominal iota, arises at the level of fifth lumbar vertebrae. It passes downward and backward and terminates at the lesser sciatic foramen by dividing into the posterior gluteal and internal pudic arteries. During its course, it gives off many collateral branches. Let us see those branches one by one by clicking the next button. A large common trunk which divides into umbilical and vesical arteries in male and umbilical and middle uterine arteries in female. Click next. This is the vesical artery which enters into the antero inferior wall of the urinary bladder and supplies it. Click next. Middle uterine artery. It is the other branch of large common trunk which supplies the horn and body of the uterus. Click next. Note the short common trunk which is the second collateral branch of internal iliac artery. It gives off sixth lumbar, lateral sacral and anterior gluteal arteries. Click next. Click next. This is the sixth lumbar artery. Click next. Note the lateral sacral artery. Click next. Click next. This is the anterior gluteal artery which enters into the greater sciatic foramen. Click next. Click next. Then the internal iliac artery passes downward and backward and terminates by dividing into posterior gluteal which passes out of the pelvic cavity through the lesser sciatic foramen to supply the middle and deep gluteus. This is the internal pudic artery which is the other terminal branch of internal iliac artery. In males, it terminates by dividing into dorsal and deep arteries of penis. In the female, it terminates by dividing into posterior uterine artery and artery of clitoris. Let us have a small brief about the lumbosacral plexus. The lumbosacral plexus is formed by the union of ventral primary branches of the last three lumbar and first, second or third sacral spinal nerves. It is divided into two divisions, namely anterior and posterior. Anterior division is situated on the lateral aspect of the hip and the posterior division is situated in the medial aspect of the hip. 
nerves arising from this plexus supplies the entire muscle of the hind limb at this stage we can see the posterior division of the lumbosacral plexus note the posterior division of the lumbosacral plexus situated above the greater sciatic foramen note the ventral primary branches of fourth fifth and sixth lumbar spinal nerves which are involved in the formation of the posterior division internal iliac vein is a satellite to the internal iliac artery which drains the venous blood from the pelvic organs sacral plexus the ventral primary branches of the third and fourth sacral spinal nerves unite to form a common cord known as sacral plexus it divides into posterior hemorrhoidal nerve to supply the rectum and the pudic nerve to supply the genital organs retractor ani it is a flat band like muscle originates from ischiatic spine and sacrosciatic ligament passes upward backward and ends under the sphincter ani externus obturator internus is situated around the obturator foramen it arises from the pelvic face of the pubis and ischium obturator nerve arises from the anterior division of the lumbosacral plexus it passes downward and backward on the pelvic face of ilium enters into the anterior part of the obturator foramen it supplies branch to the obturator internus and disappears in the muscle peritoneum it is a thin transparent serous membrane lining the abdominal cavity and its contents inguinal canal is a narrow oblique passage in the posterior part of the abdominal wall on the medial aspect of the thigh note the abdominal opening of the inguinal canal its anterior wall is formed by the fleshy part of obliquus abdominis internus the posterior wall is formed by the inguinal ligament in female it lodges the mammary vessels and nerves in male the contents of the spermatic cord passes through the inguinal canal note the external iliac artery which arises from the abdominal aorta at the level of fifth or sixth lumbar vertebrae the course of external iliac artery can be seen one after another by clicking the next button circumflex iliac artery is the first collateral branch of external iliac artery it passes outwards to the lateral angle of ilium and divides into inferior and superior branches the inferior branch supplies the iliopsoas tensa fascia lata and skin in front of the thigh the superior branch supplies the abdominal muscles and the skin on the flank region click next internal iliac vein is a satellite to the internal iliac artery which drains the venous blood from the pelvic organs abdominal muscles the origin insertion blood and nerve supply of all the layers of the abdominal muscles are shown in the volume regional dissection of ox abdomen after giving the circumflex iliac artery a common trunk arises which divides into prepubic and deep femoral arteries the deep femoral artery passes backward under the pubis to supply the muscles of the medial aspect of the thigh the prepubic artery is small passes forwards and divides into external pudic 
and posterior abdominal arteries in front of the internal inguinal ring. Since this is a female animal, the external pudic artery passes through the rudimentary inguinal canal as the mammary artery to supply the mammary gland. The posterior abdominal artery passes forward on the deep face of rectus abdominis, supplying branches to it and the internal oblique muscle. Femoral nerve is a large nerve arising from the anterior division of the lumbosacral plexus. It enters the femoral canal between the two heads of sartorius. It supplies all the heads of quadriceps femoris. This triangular muscle is the tensa fascia lata, which is the anterior most muscle of the hip and thigh. It is inserted to the fascia lata. Biceps femoris is a large and massive quadrilateral muscle extending from the sacrum to the thigh. At this stage, only the upper part alone can be seen. It originates from the sacral spines, sacro-sciatic ligament, gluteal fascia and tuber ischii. Biceps femoris is cut across at the level of tuber ischii. Reflect the muscle backwards. Immediately below the biceps, Note the middle gluteus, which is a large, thick quadrilateral muscle. It arises from lateral angle of ilia, sacrosciatic ligament, and is inserted to great trochanter and trochanteric ridge. Cut the middle gluteus at its insertion and reflect it forward to expose the deep gluteus. It is a small muscle arising from the gluteal line and lateral face of ischiatic spine. It is completely covered by the middle gluteus. This shiny band-like muscle is gluteus accessorius, which is a deep part of middle gluteus. It is inserted below the trochanter major. Note the leg region which is formed by tibia and fibula. Make a circumferential incision around the lateral aspect of the stifle joint like this. Make an another circumferential incision around the hock joint. Connect these two by a vertical incision in continuation of the incision made in the dissection of lateral aspect of the thigh. Reflect the two flaps of skin to the sides up to the anterior and posterior borders of tibia. Complex muscle is a large muscle situated on the dorsal aspect of the leg. It originates from the extensor fossa of the femur. The muscular belly in its lower part divides into three parts and each of which is succeeded by a tendon. Note the annular ligament covering the three tendons of complex muscle. They are peroneus tertius, long digital extensor and medial digital extensor. This is the superficial part called peroneus tertius. The muscular belly is provided 
with a strong flat tendon which is inserted to the large metatarsal. Note the second division of the long distal extensor muscle placed lateral to the preceding. The tendon of this muscle running down the metatarsopharyngeal articulation divides into medial and lateral branches, each of which terminates on the extensor process of the corresponding third phalanx. Note the medial distal extensor muscle whose tendon pass downward to be inserted to the second and the third phalanges of the medial digit. Note the small conical muscle lateral to the complex. This is the peroneus longus. It originates from the lateral condyle of tibia. Its belly is succeeded by a narrow tendon which passes through a synovial sheath at the tarsus. It gets inserted to the first tarsal and large metatarsal. This is the lateral digital extensor situated on the lateral aspect of the leg region and is placed behind the peroneus longus. It originates from the lateral condyle of tibia. The tendon of this muscle passes downwards to be inserted to the second and third phalanges of the lateral digit, peroneal nerve. Note the peroneus longus and look at the nerve dip in between the peroneus longus and lateral digital extensor. This is the peroneal nerve supplying all the extensor muscles of the leg region. Now the peroneus longus muscle is cut and reflected upwards. These are the muscular branches of the peroneal nerve which supply all the extensor muscles. Then the peroneal nerve runs downward at about the middle. It is divided into a thin deep peroneal and a thick superficial peroneal branches. Note the superficial peroneal nerve which runs down the metatarsal region and divides into three branches namely lateral, medial and middle branches. This is the middle branch which is involved in forming the dorsal common digital nerve. Now, the forceps showing the lateral branch that continues as lateral digital abaxial nerve. See the medial branch which continues as medial dorsal abaxial digital nerve. Note the deep peroneal nerve which runs between the lateral digital extensor and peroneus longus and gives off branches to all the muscles. Then it descends down the tarsus. Cut the complex muscle and reflect it upwards. Are you able to find a thin strap like muscle? This is the tibialis anterior which covers the lateral face of tibia. It arises from the tibial crest and tibial tuberosity. Its tendon passes downward to be inserted to the large metatarsal, second and third tarsal bones. Now, 
the tibialis anterior muscle is cut and reflected upwards. Note the lateral face of tibia. Note the scalpel which is kept below the anterior tibial artery which is a branch of popliteal artery. An unique feature of this artery is that it is accompanied by two satellite veins placed on either side of it. The artery passes downwards and gains the anterior face of the tarsus. Here, it detaches a small branch called perforating tarsal artery that passes backwards through the vascular canal in the tarsus. After this, the anterior tibial artery continues down as the anterior metatarsal artery which is the chief artery of this region. Soleus is a small and vestigial muscle arising from the lateral condyle of the tibia and is inserted to the lateral head of gastrocnemius. Note the peroneal nerve that passes over this muscle. Recurrent tarsal vein is the superficial vein on the lateral aspect of hock. It passes upwards and joins with the femoral vein under the biceps femoris. To expose the leg posterior, Make a circumferential incision around the stifle joint. And another circular incision around the hock joint. Connect these two incisions by a vertical incision like this. Reflect the skin flap on either side. At this stage, the tendon of insertion of semimembranosus and semitendinosus have been cut and reflected upwards. Note the common muscular belly of gastrocnemius formed by the fusion of medial and lateral head. It originates from the medial supracondyloid crest and lateral supracondyloid fossa of the femur. Each of these heads are continued by a tendon which joins with the tendon of superficial distal flexa to form the tendo achillus. It is then inserted to the tubercalcis of the fibula tarsal. The scalpel is showing the powerful flexa tendon called tendo achillus or hamstring. It is formed by the tendons of medial and lateral heads of gastrocnemius and the tendon of superficial distal flexa. Now, the tendo achillus is cut at its insertion. The three tendons are separated and they are placed one below the other. The superficial one is the tendon of the lateral head of gastrocnemius. The middle one shows the tendon of superficial digital flexor and the deep one belongs to the tendon of medial head of gastrocnemius. The lateral head of gastrocnemius is cut and reflected upwards. Now the pointer shows the belly of superficial digital flexor. It is continued by a strong tendon that goes to tuber calcis. 
Let us follow the course of this in the metatarsus region. It runs down the metatarsus region. and is divided into two branches a little above the fetlock and each is inserted to the second phalanx cut the origin of lateral head of gastrocnemius and reflect it are you able to identify the branch of tibial nerve on the deep face of gastrocnemius note the popliteal artery and its branches popliteus reflect the gastrocnemius and superficial distal flexa upwards this exposes the posterior surface of the leg the pointer shows the popliteus muscle which is triangular in outline on the upper part of the posterior face of the tibia it arises from the lateral condyle of tibia and is succeeded by a triangular belly which is attached to the popliteal line on the tibia note the posterior tibial artery and posterior tibial nerve supplying the popliteus muscle now the posterior face of the leg has been cleaned to show the deep flexors of the leg note the pointer showing the popliteus muscle and these three bellies belongs to deep distal flexor now the forceps is showing the superficial head of deep digital flexa note the medial head and between it and superficial head this is the deep head of deep digital flexa this is the posterior tibial artery which is the branch of popliteal artery supplying the deep flexas and popliteus see the muscular branches of tibial nerve supplying the popliteus and deep distal flexa note the common tendon of superficial distal flexa which is cut and reflected this exposes the tendon of deep distal flexa it passes downwards and divides into two branches above the fetlock each branch gets inserted to the flexa surface of the third phalanx the pointer shows the tibial nerve which is the continuation of sciatic nerve in the leg it passes between the two heads of gastrocnemius and runs over the popliteus the nerve runs downward and on reaching the medial face of the hock it divides into medial and lateral plantar nerves note the medial plantar nerve that passes downward and supply the digit note the lateral plantar nerve which descends on the lateral aspect of the metatarsus to continue as lateral plantar abaxial distal nerve
The pointer shows the popliteal artery, which is the continuation of femoral artery between the two heads of gastrocnemius. It supplies branches to gastrocnemius and superficial digital flexa. Then it divides into anterior and posterior tibial arteries. This thick branch is the anterior tibial artery. It passes under the popliteus and reaches the lateral face of tibia to supply all the extensor muscles. This longer and slender branch is the posterior tibial artery, which supplies the popliteus and deep digital flexa. Note the popliteal lymph gland, which is embedded in the fat on the gastrocnemius muscle.